Hey, hi, hello guys, my name is Mia Marie and you are currently watching my Sinistry compatibility series where I go through all the 12 signs, sun signs, and how they get along. Now, as a general disclaimer, we reference so much more than just the sun sign for compatibility, but the importance of the sun and understanding someone's sun sign and accepting it and supporting it is that the sun sign describes the motives, the behaviors, the experiences that contribute to someone's sense of sanity. So we're not talking so much about what someone needs emotionally or how they flirt or what makes them great in bed, all of those very, you know, romantic uh, topics, we're talking about how to support someone's vitality, someone's sense of self, and someone's healing human journey. So keep in mind that this is just a gentle introduction, and you can get so much more by booking a session with me or another fantastic astrologer. Someone with their sun in Capricorn has a soul that came to Earth to learn that when you work productively, you learn patience, persistence, and perseverance. Now, something that not a lot of astrologers talk about, which I find completely baffling, is that Neptune was in Capricorn from 1984 until 1998. And this is a huge influence because yes, Capricorns are hard workers and they typically, stereotypically, archetypally know who they are and what they wanna do. With Neptune here, you can actually get a character that has no idea who they are. It's almost as if they are Piscean Capricornian characters. If you're dealing with a Capricorn who was born in that time, you might notice that they have a hard time establishing an ego or seeing themselves clearly. There is this, it's almost as if when you take a shower and the mirror is fogged and you try to look at yourself, you can't see yourself. That is a Capricorn with Neptune on the sun. So back to Capricorn energy. Capricorn is the third earth sign. It is the most mature. It takes the security and the competence from Taurus. It takes the systems that Virgo has created and it goes, okay, how do we turn this into a company? How do we sell this? How do we market this? How do we create revenue? How do we provide for the masses? It's a universally oriented sign. These are typically like the bosses because they are focused on order of operations. They like things done in a specific way. They keep uh, a list of things to do and they like to check those things off. They get off to being productive. Capricorn is naturally ruled by the planet Saturn and that's the planet with the ring around it, which is perfect because Capricorn, Saturn energy, it's all about restriction, constriction, knowing boundaries, exercising boundaries, uh, bending to authority, really wanting a position that gives you authority and power. And so oftentimes what you'll find with these people is it's hard for them to play and have fun, to experience joy, because if you're playing around all day, you're not going to be as productive, right? It goes against their motive to be persistent and patient and to persevere against all odds. It's thinking the long haul. What are the decisions that I can make every single day that will turn my life into a legacy? What is my great work? And that is something that will stick with Capricorn their whole lives. Now, something they may not realize is that some of their greatest work is going to be internal. It's gonna be something that nobody else sees. They are in so many ways proving themselves to themselves, similar to Taurus, but on a greater scale. The stakes are so much higher. They're in the public eye. And along with that, they care a lot about how other people view them. They wanna come off as professional and polished. They like their clothes like iron. They like they like neutrals or they, uh, they, they just like to give the look like they are all about their business. And if they don't, you can tell depression has many correlations with Saturn energy or Capricorn energy. And so that's their default. And when they're depressed, it's their body trying to scream at them like this isn't working. This ego that, that you are working to accomplish and as a preface or as a, for clarification, I don't demonize the ego. I think that everyone has one and it must serve a purpose and the ego is trainable. That's the beauty. You can always train your ego to be in service to your soul. So I'm not slamming egos. Depression is always a call from the soul and it's saying, I don't want to be this character anymore. 
I don't want to live this life anymore. I'm tapping out. And when you have that perspective, when, when you have that awareness, then you're able to adjust your schedule. And it will be something that you have to manage on the outside. And then as you do it, as you start moving your body through the adjustment in your schedule, you'll start to reconnect with yourself or Capricorn will start to reconnect with themselves. It will also manifest by their habits and their behaviors. When they're not working, they'll work until they're exhausted and then they'll come home and they'll want to drink or they'll want to smoke. They just want out. Okay. So Capricorns in relationships specifically, it is a duty. It is something that is similar to a job. They want to show up and they want to show up every day and they expect that you're going to show up every day. And more than that, they will exercise their own restrictions and expectations onto you. They want you to get on board with their schedule. They are a leadership sign. They're a cardinal sign. And so you will find that they really take you under their wing and they want you guys to excel together. In my personal experience, I found that Capricorn does appreciate partnership, but it doesn't do the flings. It wants marriage, it wants kids, it wants the earthly representations of accomplishment. They are reliable, they are consistent, they are on top of it, they're on top of what you're doing, what you're not doing, what you should be doing, and they have an eye for things that are flawed, and they'll point it out to you. <laughs> They can kind of have a more serious or stoic attitude towards life. And it is very matter of fact when you're with them. They have this dry quality to their personality that people can find endearing. Now, some deal breakers with Capricorn. If you are not thinking long term, if you don't want a serious relationship, if you don't want to be married or have children or buy a house or grow old together, that is a Capricorn thing then they will dismiss you quite quickly. They don't want to entertain games and they don't appreciate when you try and toy with them uh, because they will show up for you. They take life seriously and they take themselves seriously, which means they also take you seriously and they expect you to act as a mature, grown and responsible adult at all times. Now, if you're someone who's a little bit more spontaneous, like for example, in my personal experience with Capricorn, I like to do things on a whim. I can't stand a plan. I like just putting myself out there and having a fun time watching where life takes me. If you have that type of an attitude, they are going to contract. They may get on board depending on their other placements, but there's something inside of them that gets nervous and they just, they kind of like do this, you know, they, they, they don't like it and they might judge you and they may call you impulsive. They don't appreciate impulsivity. They don't appreciate things that are done on a whim because it's not well thought out. You're not thinking of the consequences of your actions. What if you get lost? What if you run out of money? What if blah, 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 blah. They're going to name all the cautionary things that you didn't think about as you're trying to bungee jump off of a cliff. Piggybacking on that, they are risk averse. They don't like putting themselves in situations where they may fail because what does that show about them? What does that prove about them? That means that they aren't this authoritarian character or authoritative character, depending on whichever one they subscribe to, high functioning, low functioning. Uh, they don't like to look stupid. They like to come off as someone who can manage the masses. And so they will avoid situations where there is a greater probability that they will fall on their face or they have a hard time surrendering to the unknown. And they will criticize you for putting yourself in that situation until they see that you have been successful. So if you're someone who enjoys challenge, risk, and thrills, expect to have like a sit down conversation where it's like, they're the principal and you're the student and they're like, listen to me, <laughs> this is the rules. This is what we do. Another thing they won't appreciate is if you don't take your life seriously, if you are not accomplishing things on a daily basis, or if you have nothing to prove for your day or your energy or your effort, they like to show their person off. They like to feel as if they have also won a prize. They are a prize and so is their person. They like the power couple idea. And so if you, you know, are a little bit, if you're not as ambitious or if your ambitions don't yield material, again, representations of success and accomplishment, they're not going to 
gravitate towards you. But all in all, they're about their business. And if you are with them, then you are their business. So they're focused on the long term. They want commitment. They will show up for you. They will want to provide for you. They will want to make you feel like your relationship is stable and your home space is stable and you guys can do whatever you like because you have the funds in the bank. Someone who is born with their son in Aquarius has a soul that came into this world to awaken our consciousness. It's almost as if they have a different set of eyes than the rest of us. They see the world differently. And a lot of the time, stereotypical astrology is like, oh my God, you're trying to be different or you're trying to be unique. No, that's just the way that they see the world. And often it creates this immediate recognition that you don't fit anywhere. Aquarius doesn't fit in any specific space and it creates social anxiety. They don't know how to act. They don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. There is an ambivalence towards being around people because they don't quite, it doesn't compute in their head. Their minds are like computers. They are the 11th sign, which means that they are the third, the eldest air sign. So they take the perspective, the information that Gemini can, collects, they know that they have a mind. And then they take the information that Libra collects. They know how to put themselves in other people's shoes. They know how to compromise. They know how to negotiate. They know how to establish trust. And then they go, okay, how do we get everyone to trust each other? How do we create a community? And how do we develop this community? How do we transform our experience of life together? How do we elevate everybody? The interesting paradox with Aquarius is that they are knowledgeable, they're a resource, they have leadership skills, they are often the people that others go to when they don't know what to do as it relates to a community or group activity. They're human rights activists, they can find the gaps in structures, they know how to advance us in a very positive way, but they don't like being the center of attention. And oftentimes they don't like talking about themselves. They may feel internally like they don't want to attach to a label because they have a hard time accepting and celebrating the ego. They're the opposite of Leo. Leo is all about, here's my personality, here's how I shine. Aquarius takes that attitude but positions it towards the community. How can we shine? How can we develop? How can we be celebrated? in the most honest and authentic way. And so you'll find that they're comfortable behind a computer or on a phone, but can be a little socially awkward. I think that they would feel socially awkward or as if there is never a place for them, even when they are in a community. And this feeling can be uncomfortable for them at first. It can manifest as social anxiety and they may even avoid social situations depending on where they are inside of their head but it serves a purpose. And that purpose is that you need to remain detached enough so that you can innovate, so that you can think your own thoughts, so that you can go off in your own direction. And oftentimes they're trailblazers, they're trendsetters. They are always 10 steps ahead of the community. And because they are also a fixed sign, they're stubborn, they are unmovable in that. They have to have a certain level of confidence in their ideas and opinions in order to say, no, I'm not going to conform. You are going to come here and here's why you're going to come here. And this is how it benefits you. And this is how the human race is developing, whether you like it or not. They have this amazing ability to gaze into space and project a very clear image of a future that is totally within our capability. Like we can totally arrive to that space with them. I've said this and I will continue to say it, that even though Aquarius is an air sign, it is very sensitive, more sensitive than it realizes. And what happens when they're overstimulated is they become numb and they detach. This is the soul wound of someone who has strong Aquarius in their chart because things are always changing and because these changes affect so many people in so many negative ways that they feel equipped or responsible for repairing, they will detach from the part of themselves that cares just to stay afloat, just to stay with the changes in culture and society. And so there is this robotic tone to them or there can be just an obvious lack of emotion. You can be struggling with something and you can be crying in front of them and explaining all the which ways that you're heartbroken or let down or, and just the opposite. You could be super happy about something and there's this robot before you like, I understand. They're, the way of loving 
is that they've often researched what you're going through and what's going on in your brain and how humans typically act and how to repair that specific thing. And so they're able to like spit back this report to solve your problem, but it can be hard for them to stay in the emotion or to sympathize with you. And it's not a reflection of how much they do or don't care about you. It's more so a reflection of their internal state of being. It's hard for them to access emotions. Surprisingly enough, however, they make excellent partners because they understand the Libra lesson of trust and compromise, but they also are not looking for something hot and fiery, you know, that flirty fling that Gemini wants. They want a friend. They understand that if they are going to commit to something long-term, they have to be with someone that they like. They don't have to have the same interests, but this person has to be stimulating and intelligent and good-hearted and good-spirited. They want to be with their best friend. That is their ideal partner. And so they may hesitate to commit. I haven't heard too many complaints about Aquarius people not getting into relationships, but when they do, it tends to last because they do think long-term and they often choose someone from a I don't want to say non-emotional space because the spirit, the soul does respond to people, but it's not so much about how you make them feel. It's that you guys are just so compatible with each other that it makes sense for you to be together. And that's why Valentine's Day is surprises everybody that it's in an Aquarius season. But traditionally, that's when people were getting married. And statistically, Aquarians have the most success when they get married, because again, they marry for the right reasons. They're using their head and their soul together to make the judge, the judge, the just, the just call. Aquarius and love, they will want to talk to you. They'll want to know what you're thinking, what you've learned, what is stimulating you. They're going to have those late night conversations. They're going to be very present with you. And Again, not super emotional about it, but they, they are wanting to collect data on you. They're, they're going to master you in one way, shape, and form. That's a kind of hidden quality to them is that they're constantly collecting data on you. So they can put it into their computer and they know what to expect and they know what you want and they know where you are mentally, emotionally. And um, they're, they're just so friendly. That, that's what it is. They're just so nice to be around. I don't have any complaints about an Aquarius. Now, some downsides to dating an Aquarius, or not downsides, but what they don't like is they don't like somebody who is negative, emotional, or moody because it flies in the face of their energy. And it's not so much that you affect their mood. It's like, what you're saying and what you're doing is irritating and inefficient and a waste of time. And those are all things that they prize. They like being efficient. They like using energy positively. And if you're focused on things from the past or things that you can't control, then you're not making good use of this brilliant brain that you have. Another thing they won't like is if you're impolite or rude to other people, or if you don't care about social movements. If you are mispronouncing people's names after they've corrected you, if you're not in the know about what communities are working through what, or if you have a blatant disregard for the overall quality of humanity and, and people's lives, they will have no respect for you because this is what their life is about. They are in service to people. They are trying to break the minds, the structures, that keep us bound and limited and trapped in a pastime. And so you embodying that energy, it's like, oh my God, no, you're the enemy. You're the foe. Aquarius is ruled by Saturn and Uranus. Uranus is the modern ruler, but Saturn is the traditional ruler. And so typically you have two types of Aquarius. And what's interesting is that they embody both of them at different times of their life. So either the Aquarius person comes in very quirky, atypical, doesn't fit in. And then as time goes on, they become more Capricorn-like. They're more serious and they're about the mission and, and the rules and following protocols, or you have someone who ages backwards, who is all about the rules and tools and following what authority says and doing what you're supposed to do. And then they get really quirky in their older years. So it just depends. Now, going back to deal breakers, Aquarians are rebellious by their programming. 
they come into this world needing to stir shit up, needing to awaken our consciousness to pull us along. If it weren't for Aquarians, we wouldn't have women's rights. We wouldn't have gay rights. It's though it's that energy that progresses us, pro progresses, up, pro progresses us as the human race. And so if they are trying to rebel against a specific structure and they're starting to embody that rebellious energy and you shun them and you further ostracize them, if you are not a friend or an ally in their development and experimentation, they're, they're going to want to leave you because they're stubborn. That's what they do. They dig their heels in. They won't be emotional about it. They won't yell at you. They won't raise their voice. They won't criticize you. They'll just sit you down and say, you know, this isn't working out. I don't think we're a good match. And they can do this because their passion is towards people, groups, social reform. And so they don't inherently want or see the need for a partner unless they have a partner who, you know, is truly a partner and shows up for them and supports them, then they understand the value of that relationship. But until that point, if you're just a nuisance, if you're just another critic, if you're just someone who makes them feel more weird than they already feel, what's the point of having you? See your way to the door. Thank you, bye. I will say this though, one thing that I've noticed through working with clients with Aquarius placements is that once they are in a committed relationship, and they have in their minds that I'm going to be with this person for the long run, if they actually have married somebody and it's not working out, it can take them a long time to actually leave. And it's because they're committed, they're stubborn, they're a fixed sign. They often do what they believe in. And I think that's kind of the lesson that you learn when you're with these types of partners is Aquarians awaken to their own unconscious motives through these dysfunctional relationships. They, they self-actualize through these relationships that don't work, but that fixed quality allows them to stay in relationships that they would otherwise recognize as unhealthy. But all in all, Aquarius is a great partner in, I would say passion, I would say play, but it's neither of those. They're just a great partner to have in life because they will commit to you, they won't play games, and they are focused on something bigger than themselves at all times. They want to make an impact. They want to help us all grow and develop. Sun in Capricorn, Sun in Aquarius. This is quite the combination. <laughs> These two are similar in more ways than they are willing to admit, but they use their strengths and talents in ways that can kind of make the other one irritated. So to begin with, let's just start off from basic astrology. We have an air sign and, a and an earth sign, which means that they generate and restore energy in different ways. A, a Capricorn wakes up in the morning and it's like, oh, you know, I feel good. I'm ready to go. Aquarius wakes up like, oh, I need to get moving so I can generate the energy that I need to carry me out. And on top of that, they both like to have successful days. They are focused on something much bigger than themselves, being universally oriented signs. Capricorn is focused on its company or uh, supplying a, a product to the masses. It is very business minded. And Aquarius is focused on marginalized groups, uh, social reform. And so they're both quite busy. They are leaders in their industry and they are knowledgeable in what they have chosen to do. Now the issue with dating somebody who has the same perspective as you, but an opposing element, is that you guys are looking generally at the same thing, but you guys have totally different approaches and you have totally different outcomes in mind. In fact, as I've said with this specific combination, they are working at cross purposes. Uh, Capricorn is trying to build something and Aquarius is trying to break it down to make it better. Capricorn is focused on what it can see, what it can measure, what it can touch and feel and experience. And Aquarius is looking at what exists and is forecasting a vision of what it could be. And so when Aquarius is sharing its ideas with Capricorn, Capricorn might be like, oh, that's just so lofty and daydreamy. That, that is something that's too far off in the distance. Let somebody else do that. And Aquarius will be like, well, I am that somebody else. And so that is the main difference between your personal perspectives. It's not something that will break a relationship, but it is something where you guys are going to have to agree to disagree because your sanity is hinge on it. Aquarius needs to be the rebel who is challenging the norm. And Capricorn needs to be the person who is creating some kind of structure that is actually up for critique. 
Uh, so as long as you guys don't expect that your partner fully gets on board with what you're doing and you guys can just witness <laughs> what the other one is, is trying to accomplish, then you, you should stay on pretty safe grounds. Thankfully, because you guys are born within a month of each other, there is a higher probability that if you're a Capricorn, you have some Aquarius placements like uh, a Mercury in Aquarius or a Venus or maybe a rising sign. I'd grant that permission. And then if you are an Aquarius, you might have some Capricorn placements. Now, this could create room for understanding where, you know, if you're an Aquarius with strong Capricorn, you may appreciate structures and be a little bit more focused on reality versus the future. Um, and so you guys might have some simpatico there, but again, we have two very strong personalities that are almost competitors in their field. And so when you are fighting so hard and, and your vitality and your sanity is hinging on what you're contributing to the world at large, your life mission, your legacy, um, you can lead with ego and it can become a battle I've seen between these two of, who knows more, who is smarter, who is better, who is a better leader. And, um, you know, the easiest way to address this is to recognize that you guys are both great at doing what you choose to do. It just so happens that you guys don't have the same goals. Uh, you guys don't have the same mission. And so accepting that straight away will assuage a lot, and it will prevent many different arguments. Now, the reason why we have some kind of conflict here, I mean, for one, if you guys are both busy all the time, it's easy for this relationship to take a back seat. Also, neither one of them are too emotional, and so the relationship itself might be seen as a duty or task that they are responsible for versus a relationship that needs like love, care, nurturing, and all that jazz. Where it gets interesting is that these signs are both ruled by Saturn. Uh, Capricorn is only ruled by Saturn and Aquarius is ruled by Saturn and Uranus. And so here Capricorn is has a deep respect for hierarchies, structures. It is often, you know, the key player in creating a structure that a, a company can function on, a, a country can function on. And Aquarius will take one look at everything that Capricorn is doing and go, mm, you have one fatal flaw and here's what it is. And it's actually in the foundation of your structure. So everything has to go down. <laughs> and, and Capricorn will be like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, where do you get the audacity to point this out? They will have dick measuring contests on the regular because they are both advanced souls. They are both stubborn souls. Being ruled by Cap by Saturn gives them both this quality of, well, I am the ultimate authority. Well, I know what I'm talking about. Now, the blessing of this relationship is that Aquarius is the remedy for all of Capricorn's issues. The reason why Capricorn feels so constricted and so weighted is because it's refusing to let go of things. It's like the structures inside of its soul, inside of its mind, inside of its being that are old and outdated. Capricorn can be planted in the past and that takes a toll on the spirit. And so what do you do? You have to be willing to have a tower moment. You have to be willing to break down, break yourself down and be vulnerable, be open, be empty, be resourcelessness. And that's what Aquarius is all about. When an Aquarius comes into a Capricorn's life, if Capricorn relaxes enough and takes a small piece of Aquarius's information, their mental health will soar because a lot of their issues, Aquarius knows how to solve. And it's just by daring to be different, daring to be unique, daring to take a step that is unpredicted, <laughs> uh, to live an unpredictable life in, in, in one way. And so I do see Aquarius being the person who is more of a coach in this relationship, but again, only if the Capricorn person relaxes enough into it. Now, because each of these people take their public image quite seriously, or even if Aquarius doesn't take it, well, it does. <laughs> so these people take their public image quite seriously. They're working on something that they value and um, they're, as I said, very good at what they do. And so when they walk into a room together, they will get the respect that they both deserve. Now, Aquarius is a little bit more quirky. And so 
it's not going to be wearing name brand things unless of course you have like a Venus and Capricorn, then you are going to be all about like, well, I have this name brand, <laughs> but just purely Aquarius energy. You don't look at, a, at an Aquarius and say like, oh, wow, you have tons of money, honey. You would look at the Capricorn and say that because you know, they're, they're wearing a tux and it's ironed and everything is perfect and straight and crisp. Uh, but the moment an Aquarius opens their mouth, it's like, oh, wow, you are way more intelligent than I initially thought. And I'm in the presence of an innovator, a visionary, somebody who is insanely intelligent. And so these people won't have any issues being respected by the, the groups that they're around. They may find themselves time and time again being the, the, the couple that people come to for advice or for help because they are so grounded and uh, reliable and successful. So they may find themselves again, distracted from their relationship and more focused on what they can do for other people. So if you're in this combination, I would say, please plan a date night. <laughs> Capricorn, this is where you can shine. Like, okay, cool. On my schedule every Thursday, Thursday's a great date night. I mean, it's ruled by Jupiter. So like, let's play and have fun, right? So every Thursday night, <laughs> plan date night. And because you're good at that. And then Aquarius, once it becomes habit, Aquarius will just carry it through. So even though Capricorn might be like, oh, I have this meeting, Aquarius will be like, nope, me and you. And then you guys can actually foster and nurture your, your relationship and partnership. So this is just one component of literally over 2,000. <laughs> Love that sound, <laughs> right on time. <laughs> uh, if you would like to learn more about your specific birth chart or your relationship synastry, and you would like to work with me, you can find me at wellandrising.com forward slash services. Toodles!